Adaptive switches are expensive, but what's inside? Let's find out. Hey internet, I'm that guy Bud. Today we're gonna look at adaptive switches. We're gonna tear down one of the most popular models and see what's inside and look at some DIY options. This is the Jelly Bean Twist. It's a small, responsive, pretty elegant model actually. The switch has a nice size and feel and the action of the switch is very light. It's great for someone with not much hand strength, but I fear that its light touch might make it hard for some to disengage. It has a flange on the side with three points to mount it with screws permanently to a surface. It has a strange clear cap that goes over the colored cap. I guess it's supposed to act like a childproof cap to keep people from accidentally unscrewing the interchangeable colored cap beneath. But I found that it just pops off way too easily, even on flat surfaces. If this were mounted upright, this will be even more of an issue. But enough of what's on the outside, let's see what's on the inside. First off, we'll remove that clear cap and unscrew the colored cap beneath it. At this point, you can see the switch at the heart of the case. Let's get further in. There are three screws holding the main case together. Let's get those out. This button is just held in by a couple plastic pegs. This section of the base is support for one side of those pegs. If we detach this cable, we can see the pegs and how the button slides off. Slide the button off, the cable out, and that's it. That's all there is to it. At the heart of this switch is an Omron G3P series switch with some nice big solder points. This switch goes for between a dollar and a dollar fifty depending on how many you buy. But the real cost in this switch is the body. Custom injected molded parts are expensive. It's not about how much each part costs, but rather the cost to make the mold that makes each part. It's a great switch, it really is, even though the button and the cable, the part that do the work, couldn't have cost the company more than three dollars. Let's compare this button to a completely different product. This is the answer button from Learning Resources. It's used like a game show buzzer for classroom activities. It's a firmer button and it clicks, but not as loudly as the AbleNet button. It doesn't have screw points, but it does have four rubber feet to keep it from sliding around. Here's the question. How can we modify this button to function like this button? Let's tear it down to see what's inside. When you take off the feet, you'll see some screws underneath. Take out those four screws and the whole thing comes apart. Inside you can see the battery case, a speaker to produce the sound it makes, and this board here. This blob contains the sound chip, and this big metal piece here is what's called a dome switch. They're pretty common in tactile buttons like these, or in older game controllers like the ones for the Atari 2600. They're cheap, but very reliable. We're going to disconnect the battery compartment so it can no longer produce sound. I could take out the speaker, but it isn't bothering anyone. The way that this switch works is that the outer perimeter of the dome touches one contact of the switch. When the dome is compressed, the middle part of the dome touches the other contact, which is underneath it. So we just need to connect a couple wires to the two contacts the dome uses. There's some tape holding the dome down, so we'll put some solder here to connect it to the ring section, and here for the other contact. In order to make this work, we need to pass a cable through to connect it to these points. I want it to go through this ring, so I mark my place and make a small hole. I'm going to take a mono 8th inch audio cable and cut it in half. Then I'm going to pass it through the hole, strip off some insulation, and then tin the tips of the cable. Then I'll solder the cables to those points, Okay, let's test it. Seems good. I'm going to add a zip tie to make some strain relief. Let's close it up. Still works. Great. So both of these buttons now have the same capabilities. The AbleNet button comes with four interchangeable tops and is priced at $60. For $15, the learning resources option comes in a set of four whole buttons. Enough audio cable to wire them all up will cost another $15. A little DIY and you have four times as many switches for half the price. The thing I want you to take away from this video is that the inside of a switch is very simple. Yes, some of these cases are well engineered, but most models use off-the-shelf project boxes and off-the-shelf switches. If you've ever used a hot glue gun, you can use a soldering iron. And a standard switch will often only have two solder points, so there really isn't that much to mess up. If this is something that you want to do, you can do this. Join us for our next video when I show you how to make battery interrupters. If you have any suggestions for future videos or questions about this one, you can leave them in the comments below or reach me on Twitter at thatguybud. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Thank you for watching, we'll see you next time.